Today, one of the tense moments from the Ukrainian front line, as Ukraine runs desperately short on ammunition, small killing machines buzz across the battlefield, hunting down the enemy and decimating its tanks. FPV drones are our sword, our strike force, against Russia's advance, special ops warrior, Arsenal, the commander of Kyiv's attack drone operations. Ukraine has become increasingly reliant on first-person view, FPV, drones nimble, target-seeking, kamikaze unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs. Since early 2023, the cheap, explosive, flying machines have turned into one of Kyiv's biggest success stories on the battlefield, forcing Moscow's forces to catch up. This is undeniable, said Arsenal, who goes by his call sign for security reasons, and the senior officer is head of FPV drones at the State Transport Special Service, a specialized military unit attached to Ukraine's Ministry of Defense. With the 600-mile front frozen in hellish trench warfare, Arsenal said the conflict is moving into a technological war, and developing attack drones is key to this. The quadcopter's drones cost around 300 pounds, are largely made from off-the-shelf pieces of kit and are now often assembled into precision weapons by civilians in their homes. Some are fitted with grenades or home-built bombs, others are used for reconnaissance missions to identify enemy positions and guide artillery fire. The attack UAVs have come to define the conflict, helped by constant streams of footage filmed on board as they tail troops, blast Russian positions or smash into tanks with ruthless precision. Arsenal revealed that the killer drones now successfully blitz Putin's targets in three out of five operations, and FPV drones are extremely important in this war, absolutely every drone, even the ones that fall under the influence of Russian electronic jamming, save lives. If Mavic, surveillance, drones are our eyes for the adjustment of artillery fire, withdrawal of groups to positions, reconnaissance, then FPV drones are our sword, our strike force. Over two-thirds of Russian tanks destroyed by Ukraine in recent months have been taken out using FPV drones, a NATO official told Foreign Policy. Their long-range capabilities also save countless lives as the drone operator can be stationed away from the front line, they make it safe for the pilots, Arsenal said. If earlier the grenade launcher had to be in the direct line of sight of the tank in order to hit it, risking his life, now this shot with the same RPG projectile is carried out from a distance of 3 to 15 kilometers. When asked about this most successful design characteristic, Arsenal proudly said, there are many of them, and unfortunately I can't comment on this for security reasons, they're also being constantly adapted and upgraded as Ukraine's military learns from each new battle. Last week, Kyiv announced it was building a new fleet of so-called unstoppable, eye-powered FPVs designed to hunt down and strike targets on their own, while being less susceptible to Russian interception or jamming. While Ukraine is certainly not far behind Russia in terms of drone warfare, Arsenal said, we lag behind in the number of drones and in their intensity. But Ukraine's MOD has a ruthless determination to change that when Ukraine's new commander-in-chief, General Sersky, was appointed in February, he warned that the only way to defeat Russia would be to achieve a technological edge. On the other hand, Russian troops are stalling in their Donetsk offensive, having made only slow progress around the strategic eastern town of Chasiv Yar. The settlement is key to Kyiv's defensive line in eastern Ukraine and has become a prime target for Moscow, according to new analysis. Ukraine's army chief, Colonel General Alexander Sersky, has previously stated that Russian forces hope to capture the strategically crucial town before May 9, and the town sits west of Bakhmut, which Russian forces captured in May 2023 after months of bitter and bloody fighting. <laughs> Capturing Chasiv Yar would enable Russia to attack into Ukraine's belt of operationally significant fortress cities, the U.S. think tank, the Institute for the Study of War, 
ISW, assessed earlier this month. Fortress cities are a collection of settlements west of the front line in Ukrainian-held territory, including Slovyansk, Kramatorsk, Druzhivka, and Kostyantinivka. The cities sit between approximately 7 and 18 miles from the front line. Seizing Chasiv Yar could also help Russia cut off Kostyantinivka, around 12 kilometers or just over 7 miles from the front line, which would compromise the backbone of Ukraine's defense in the Donetsk region, the think tank said. Ukraine's military has warned that Russia would move from Chasiv Yar onto Kramatorsk and Slovyansk, but Chasiv Yar is heavily defended and located on high ground, the UK government said on Sunday while Russian ground forces have made only slow progress in the area. Russia's government said on Sunday that its forces had seized the village of Bodenivka, northeast of the targeted settlement, and improved the situation along the front line. Moscow's troops repelled two Ukrainian attacks around Chasiv Yar in the past day, Russia's defense ministry said in a statement. Ukraine's military said on Sunday that Russian troops had launched 28 attacks around Bakhmut in the past 24 hours, including around Ivaniski, to the southeast of Chasiv Yar. Russia has largely focused its efforts in pushing westwards in Donetsk, making slow but steady gains in the east of the region, while maintaining lower-level fighting at other spots along the front line. Ukrainian officials have said Russia is planning a summer offensive, which may start as early as the end of next month, and Kyiv had also emphasized that its ability to fend off a new offensive would hinge on Western military aid deliveries. On Saturday, the U.S. House of Representatives approved more than $60 billion in aid to Ukraine, which had been stalled for months by political infighting and the Senate will now vote on the package, before it heads to President Joe Biden for sign-off. The aid will take likely weeks to arrive on the battlefield and start to make a difference, during which time Ukraine will likely lose more ground to Russia, the ISW assessed on Saturday.